I was lucky from an early age, I guess, that my father took a lot of time and invested a lot in education, uh, himself being well qualified. And uh, I was lucky to get into some nice universities, uh, both in South Africa and abroad. And, and I've just noticed that it opens up uh, a whole new thinking capability, a whole new exposure to the world at large. And it's not just about the books. Um, but it's about what you pick up anywhere in the world. And the experiences aren't all first world. Um, a lot of the greatest experiences I've had have been in universities in Sri Lanka or in Vietnam or in Ca um, Colombia, uh, in Cambodia, in you know, all over the world, in South America and of course across Africa. And uh, if you can juxtapose that with you know, some of the more established and perhaps more formal learnings that you get from uh, developed countries, um, it's quite a nice interesting part and I think we all have something to teach each other. Uh, education is key. It's the, it's the savior of Africa. It's the savior of economies. And uh, I'm really looking forward to playing a part um, as the future continues. During my undergraduate years, I was privileged to study with the poet Henry Coulette. Henry told us that writing was like writing letters. He had to believe that somewhere, somehow, someone else was reading those letters. We, in turn, also needed to listen to the voices of other poets. And what he said has stayed with me all my life. It seems especially important today with the internet and online media. So much of our conversations now are shared. Other people are listening. And we must be more true, more honest about everything we're saying to each other. One-way conversation is out. Talking, listening, and learning interactively is much more rewarding. The, definitely the defining moment of my uh, educational career was when I got my PhD and graduated with that. And part of the moment that was so special was that I got to share it with my advisor, Dr. John Warren. And you know, not only had he been an incredible advisor, but he was also just a really good friend. And it was always something I had to remind myself that John was just a few years older than me because he was so prolific. I mean, he was a rock star, and I just always felt so special that he was my advisor. And so, uh, you know, this year, actually earlier this year, John tragically passed at about at age 36. And so I've had a lot of time this year to be thinking about just his legacy and the inspiration that he, he left for me and for the rest of us lucky enough to, to have worked with him. I support all initiatives that encourage introducing art and design in schools uh, right from an early age because I believe every child, every individual is capable of visual thinking and it's an intelligence that we don't develop in a path today. So I actively support an NGO called the Art Project in India, which I helped launch as well. Um, they, they, they do a lot of work in sensitizing slum children in India to a way of problem solving through art and design. So when I was in first grade, I, like many young creatives, I was uh, kind of off in La La Land and had a little trouble focusing. It's a little ener overly energetic. So my first grade teacher, I think, identified that I needed some ways to channel that kind of energy and attention. And I think that teachers that engage their students on that level and make them feel comfortable, confident, and cared for are the teachers that get the best out of their students. And I really wanted to do well for her from the beginning of that uh, first grade year on. I was really inspired by Dominique Regnier, who were one of my teachers in Sciences Po Paris. He's one of the Paris famous uh, politics scientists. I think he, he learned me that sometimes will and determination um, can be as important as the things that you learn during your, your school time.